Hey everyone, you're listening to the Simple Electronics Podcast. I'm your host, Dan, from the Simple Electronics YouTube channel. Today's episode is brought to you by PCBWay, but more on that later. And so today I don't really have a special guest, it's just me. Now, I do have some guests on the waiting list, so to speak. One that I have to reach back out to very shortly because the guest is kind of uh, waiting for me to reply. However, I've been incredibly busy, and so, yeah, having not had the chance to uh, schedule uh, some times for guests to come on, so today is just me. I think one of the really good parts about that, however, is that I can record right at the last minute, and so the information you get, or whatever I'm talking about, happens pretty much right when you're listening to the podcast. For reference, it is nearly 10 p.m. on May 23rd, 2023, and so this episode is going to go live uh, basically tomorrow for my Patreon patrons, and then in two days for the general release, and then three days for the audio. So yeah, you're getting fresh news as to what I've been up to. Very first thing that's on my mind, though, is that um, I've been talking for a little bit about spending more time on the water. And so uh, to that end, I actually got a really good deal on a boat trailer, something that is um, maybe not as lightweight as I was hoping, but it is uh, in decent shape, did need some repairs, and it was very inexpensive. So I didn't pay very much money for it, and I towed it up to my parents' cottage to store it for the moment uh, as I work out some kinks with, uh, you know, my fishing setup. And so it's up there now. And when I went to drop it off, I saw that there were a ton of branches that had fallen from a ice storm we had about a month ago. And so there was a literal pile, um, probably up over 500 pounds worth of uh, branches, probably more than that, in fact. And so uh, we just had a holiday here in Canada, uh, the May 2-4 weekend. And uh, I spent the whole day up at the cottage with my old man, and we cleaned up all the branches, which was uh, a great thing because I've got some property here where I live It's not very big, but there's a lot of trees around. And um, we have to take our branches, cut them into little pieces, and put them on the side of the road for, you know, weekly pickup. But over there at the cottage, we just started a a fire and we burned all of the branches. We spent, uh, I think it was nearly six hours of constant burning these softwood branches and uh, eventually made, got through the entire pile, which was fantastic. So yeah, I spent a whole day basically in the fresh air, burning some branches, leaves, all sorts of things. And uh, it felt really good to be out in the in the fresh air and near the water. And since I was there, um, I also put my little fishing boat in the water with a, a used 9.5 horsepower motor from uh, 1969. And um, I put it in the water, gave it a test, and everything went pretty well. The 9.5 horsepower is not quite in tip-top shape. I should be doing some projects with that at some point soon. Um, it just pops out of gear, so that's that's a bad thing. Sometimes it pops out of gear. It did it, you know, twice in uh, about 20 minutes of running it that I that I did. So it's not too too bad. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I got to spend some time on the water, not as much time as I was hoping for, but got to spend some time nonetheless. So I'm a pretty happy guy today. Of course, I had to go back to reality because I still have the teaching contract, which is both a blessing and a curse, mostly a blessing, but it's a curse on my free time because I have none. Uh, so yeah, I'm just looking forward to next time I can head up to the cottage, probably bring uh, some GoPros with me and um, uh, buy a fishing license and then uh, hopefully share an outing on the boat. Probably going to be on my second channel, uh, Dairy. 
probably going to link it down in the description below if you're interested in that. That channel is kind of like a mix of a whole bunch of things. So nothing too serious. Um, only go subscribe if you want to see the sort of esoteric stuff that does not fit into the electronics channel. But yeah, now back in the town, I'm just itching to get back on the water. The time on the water has also um, told me that my boat is a little bit too small. Uh, when I just had the little electric trolling motor and uh, a couple of those deep cycle um, lead acid batteries on board, it wasn't too bad. Um, the boat goes fairly slowly, right, with the electric motor. It's, it's a trolling motor, basically, so it's meant for high torque, um, low speed applications. And so that was fine. But with the added weight of the outboard motor, the the, um, the gasoline engine, uh, and then trying to fit the electric somewhere, it's starting to get a little crowded on board, especially with, you know, safety gear, um, you know, like you need the paddles, and um, then I also need an anchor, a, a, a tow line, um, life jacket would be pretty good to have on board. And so it is starting to get a little crowded there. The worst part is that I can't really mount the trolling motor, the electric motor, at the same time as having the gasoline engine on there. The transom, the, the back wall of the boat is actually very small. And so they can't be both mounted. So I have to figure out some sort of uh, front mount for it. And also I noticed that the aluminum boat is uh, taking on a lot of water. It, I mean, in the past, it took on a little bit of water. And I would just, uh, I mean, I could be gone for a couple hours and I'd probably get, you know, like a cup or two of water in it. But now it's going a lot faster than that. So I probably filled, uh, you know, a whole gallon over 20 minutes. So that's not great. So that means I'm going to have to go up there and do a little bit more work to the boat to try to keep it uh, seaworthy. I'm not like concerned that it'll sink. It's still very slow. And if I bring a, a bailing bucket, it's probably going to be entirely fine. So that's not a that's not a big deal. But it does mean that sometimes I'll when I go up to the um, to my parents cottage for leisure time, I will have to spend a couple hours doing some work on the trailer. I want to get that all painted and on the uh, the boat and the outboard motor. So it's not going to be as smooth sailing as I thought. But it is what it is. Um, another thing, too, that ties in very nicely with this is that um, I did mention, I believe I did mention at some point that I had made the biggest purchase that I have uh made so far for the YouTube channel, which is some lithium iron phosphate, uh, phos lithium iron phos, li lithium iron batteries. They cost me a ton of money, almost a thousand dollars Canadian. And I ordered them on April 1st. So we are nearing the two month mark, uh, from AliExpress and, uh, they still haven't showed up in Canada yet. And so starting to get a little bit worried, but I do know that these things do take a couple months because they come in by boat. And so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a little afraid of it not showing up, but I mean, it should show up. And if not, I mean, AliExpress should quote unquote, uh, cover me if not. But the whole point I'm saying this is because uh, since I went up to the cottage and there was no way I was rowing back if that uh, gas engine failed on me, um, I brought the, the, the massive lead acid batteries. I brought one of them up. And honestly, I think I'm getting too old to carry that thing around. It's, I, I mean, I think it's like 60 or 65 pounds or something like that. I'll get you that in uh, kilos, so 65 pounds to kg. It is uh, 30 kilos, and the thing has no handles, no nothing. And so I am so excited to get the lithium iron phosphate batteries from China so I can make myself, first of all, so I can experiment with them a little bit, 
And so I can make myself a 12 volt, you know, long lasting battery, which weighs a fraction of the amount of the um, lead acid battery. And on top of that, it should be able to give me a full depth of discharge. I should be able to discharge literally um, 100 and I think there are 105 amp hours. So I should be able to take out, take down 105 amp hours out of them. And um, yeah, I, I, I can't wait to mess with lithium iron phosphate batteries. I've been looking at lithium iron phosphate cells for years at this point. And the fact that um, it ties into my YouTube channel is just such a great bonus. But the crazy thing is, the battery management system for those um, for those cells. So you can't drain these batteries all the way down to zero. You're going to damage them. And you can't charge them above, I think it's 3.65 volts per cell that you have in series. Or else you risk... Um, I don't think they catch fire. Uh, these lithium iron phosphate batteries are a lot safer than the, you know, the 18650s or the lithium pouch cells. But they can get really hot and vent. So they will be ruined. They'll be damaged forever. And so you need something to manage the charging, the discharging of those cells. And you also, oh yeah, you can't pull too much current out of them at once because then you can also um, release gas on the inside and pressurize them and they'll vent and they'll be, you know, no good from there. So you have to buy uh, what we call a BMS, a battery management system. And there's a couple of key players uh, in this field. One of which is uh, DALI BMS. You probably seen these if you've done any research at all on um, lithium iron phosphate batteries. And the DALI ones are the ones that are red. So they're red and black color theme. And they're the ones that look really sleek in cases and stuff. So I ordered two um, that are capable of delivering 100 amps, which is what I'm expecting to pull from, you know, 100 amp hour cells, even though they're going to be uh, parallel, but that's another story. I ordered two directly from the Dally store. I paid a lot of money. They're $130 each. And I'm planning on making two packs because I bought 16 cells. Long story. Um, but um, yeah, so I bought two with active balancing and Bluetooth and they came up with shipping to $285 Canadian. And so I was like, whatever, in for a penny, you know, in for a pound, whatever it is. So instead of my $1,000 on batteries, I paid, you know, $1,300 in batteries with the BMS. But then I messaged the seller and I was saying, I was asking him if I can put two of these battery management systems in series so I can increase the the voltage. I can go from a 12-volt setup, which I was planning on starting with, to a 24-volt setup. And they said no. So I said, okay, that's fine. I thought I bought top-of-the-line BMSs, but obviously that's not, that's not the case. Uh, so I was mistaken. So I said, okay, but can I hook them up in parallel? And then the seller said, no, to hook them up in parallel, you're going to need um, these special modules to connect them in parallel. You can't just connect the uh, wires together. And I thought, you know what, this is giving me a bad taste in my mouth and they haven't shipped yet. So I canceled the order. It took um, like seven days to get my money refunded, but the order did get canceled. So that was good. So then I was like, okay, I need to shop for some sort of BMS. And the DALI that I've been seeing all the time, D-A-L-Y, that, that is just not an option. It's kind of like upmarket. And so I ordered uh, some JBD um, BMSs, Jebida BMSs, which I had seen on... Um, on a, a, a guest's channel 
I had uh, Roland on from Roll Two Videos, and uh, one of the 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 batteries he had opened up, one of the pre built ones, had a uh, JBD uh, BMS, and he said he really liked it and he loved the functionality of it, and so he said it was it was good, and so I just uh, did a quick search. I found the official store on AliExpress and put in an order for two uh, BMSs, and it came up to under half the price of uh, two DALI BMSs. So I paid one twenty three twenty eight Canadian for two uh, J- JBD BMSs. Again, um, maxed out at 100 amps uh, of constant discharge, and uh, it can do some, you know, some peak discharge of a little bit higher. I actually preferred the way that it was uh, set up, like the how the board works. You'll have to wait until the video to, to take a look. And in the title, it says 4S, so four cells in series to make 12 volts. That's what I was expecting. LFP, which is uh, lithium iron phosphide. So the F is for um, the the uh, elemental symbol for iron, which is FE, so LFP. And then it says serializable, which to me meant they can be hooked up in series, which was a big deal for me because I want to try different voltages. And this one also has optional heating pad uh, attachments and stuff. So I ordered that. Um, The batteries haven't come in yet. They're not even in Canada, like I said. But these uh, JBD BMSs actually did come in in the mail. So I had the box here and I was trying to figure out what to do on one of my live streams on my live streaming channel. And, you know, the chat voted for me to record a live mailbag video. Pretty cool. So I opened that package as part of the live streaming video. And in the box was only one. I had ordered two. They only sent one. So I was like, oh, not again. So I, I, you know, contacted the seller and he said, oh, don't worry about it. I'll just look into it. And then a couple days go by. He hasn't said anything. I said, have you looked into it? He didn't answer at all. And so I opened a case with AliExpress. AliExpress asked for proof. And then I went through all the hoops and I got, I got my money back for half. So I ended up spending, you know, about 65 bucks with the shipping, something like that for one. So no batteries yet. Uh, Ordered four BMSs, uh, canceled two before they shipped, and then only one arrived of the other two. So it's not looking good, right? And so I'm doing some shopping for what BMS I'm going to be using for a second pack. I mean, I can tie all these these packs together I can just do four uh, four in series four in parallel but it's not useful I'd love to you know charge one pack while I use the other pack etc etc so I'm uh, shopping and I come up with these Helltech BMS's so um, Helltech is I don't even know the company like I don't know anything about them um, but I have seen them advertised. So, okay. So I ordered a four cell, same thing, a 200 amp this time. So if I build a pack with two cells in series, four, uh, two cells in parallel, four in series, uh, I'll have to explain all this during my lithium battery um, video. Don't worry about it. It's coming. Um, then I can draw the full 200 amps off of it. And this BMS is even cheaper than the JBD, JDB, JBD. Uh, so this one was forty dollars and twenty-seven cents free shipping. So I'm still waiting for this one to show up. So okay, that's ordered. But also, I've been following a YouTuber called the Digital Mermaid. Digital Mermaid is this Canadian woman uh, from South, uh, you know, Southern Ontario somewhere, and. She is big on lithium batteries and stuff like that. And she bought a sailboat in the States that she plans on converting to electric eventually. 
which is right up my alley because I plan on uh, converting a boat, having a boat that's electric for for sure, probably a, a raft to start with. Um, and she was talking about a JK BMS. Now I don't know, don't I don't really know the name of the JK BMS, like what it what it really uh, stands for. But um, anyways, I I ordered a JK BMS as well. Very expensive, same price as the Dally, pretty much. So one twenty three fifty for a single one, but it does uh, two amps, uh, two hundred amps. It has active balancing, and now I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it looks like you can do uh, four cells in series all the way up to eight cells in series, which would be very helpful because then I can actually make uh, eight cell, uh, f- you know, eight uh, eight cell in series, so twenty four volt, uh, two hundred amp uh, battery pack so i could technically have a 12 volt pack and a 24 volt pack and then you know mess with those or you know order more anyways regardless i ordered another one so i should have three bms's on the way right does that make sense uh this one i'm just looking at my aliexpress listing here uh one, two, no, I should have two BMSs on the way and I have one BMS here. In the meantime, when I was trying to find a place to store my BMS, the one I I do have on hand, um, hilariously, I found out that one of the holes for the mounting brackets, like where you, where you would mount like a, like a terminal is not tapped. So I'm going to have to tap holes into it, uh, and make my own threads so, like, this saga is just crazy. So I feel like it's going to make a good story, right? The saga of the, um, of the, of the BMS. But, um, yeah. Uh, anyways, at the very least, I'll have a lot of stuff to test for you guys, which is uh, pretty neat. Which brings me to another thing that I, you know, didn't realize I needed. So when you're testing these high-capacity uh, cells you probably want to draw a large current on them to see if they're actually legit, like if you can draw a large current from them. Well, I have nothing that'll go above 600 watts at this point. And so I had to also order uh, what they call a smart shunt. So a smart shunt is basically um, like a microprocessor and a screen and a current shunt. A current shunt is just a known resistance that is very low uh, resistance. And the microcontroller will um, calculate the current going through the shunt by checking the voltage drop using Ohm's law. And uh, it also knows the voltage. And so it can do like the total voltage. And so it'll do calculations to tell you, you know, your your amps, your volts, your resistance, your uh, watts, watt hours, amp hours, all that stuff. So I ordered one of those. Have it here going to be pretty interesting to uh, play with it, especially with um, the lead acid batteries I have now. So I'll be able to compare like a 100 amp hour uh, battery pack to my like like lithium iron phosphate compared it to my, you know, uh, lead acid batteries, which will be pretty fun. But the only thing is this shunt is just a shunt. So it it just takes the place of a wire, basically. You still need a load to pull, um, to pull that that current from something. Now Roland from Roll Two Videos, he uses a um, an a- a DC to AC inverter, and then he plugs in like a heat gun or something, something very powerful like that. As much as I'd like an inverter, I've already spent a ton of money on batteries that haven't even shown up yet, and so. I don't know. I can get like a thousand watt uh, pure sine inverter for 220 bucks or I can go up a little bit. I don't know if the like the Renogy ones. Yeah, I could get like a 3000 watt for a thousand dollars, which would be nice. And, you know, in times where we have uh, power outages, but it's this is all starting to get very expensive. So I'm not going to get the inverter at this point. But at some point soon, I'll have to think about it 
Um, the other thing I can probably do is a DC load. Uh, but, you know, to pull 100 amps at 12 volts or even 100 amps at um, 24 volts, that's going to take a hell of a load. So I'll have to figure something out. I mean, with 200 amps of constant discharge on a um, on a 12 volt system, you can pretty much run a starter motor for for a car. I mean, the instantaneous current will be way higher than that, probably around the order of 400. But that's only for like a millisecond or so. So if your BMS has a like a burst uh, power allowance, like where in a burst it allows a lot more current through and then constant is uh, the 100 you could run a starter motor uh, almost for sure um when to get up to 200 amp hours at 24 volts which is what the jk bms should be able to do that's that's then uh you know quadrupled because now you're doubling the current and doubling the voltage so um, 200 amps at uh, 24 volts, that's 4,800 watts at that point, uh, which is, let's see, which is about six horsepower possible out of that, which is crazy, six and a half horsepower, really. And that's a constant discharge uh, possible through that BMS, through the uh, JK, the high quality one. So this is, um, this is a lot of energy we're talking about, a lot of power we're talking about. And this is what gives me hope that I'll probably be able to make my own electric motor that'll be faster than a trolling motor by replacing the power head, the, the gasoline portion of an outboard with uh, an electric motor. You know, probably something simple to start with, like a... Um, a my 1020 like a a big uh, 24 volt uh, 500 watt or or um, a thousand watt like go-kart replacement motor but then eventually going up to like an alternator motor like a three-phase um, alternator converted to a motor which will be pretty freaking fun if you ask me i can't wait to go through all of these projects but i mean at first i need the time right? Time is the big thing. I have a couple weeks worth of contract left with the college and then I have a week off and then I've got um, another contract starting, but that one should not be as much of a brain drain. Just going to interrupt the conversation real quick here to talk about today's sponsor, PCB Way. Look, I don't really have to sing the virtues of PCB Way. You guys already know it. Um, you can order boards 5, 10, 15, actually just keep increasing the amounts until the dollar amount goes up. Uh, that's, that's what I do basically. And, uh, it's only five bucks cheap shipping, uh, obviously American dollars on that one. As long as you stay within, um, a hundred millimeters by a hundred millimeters, it's five bucks. And so it's a great service. I've only had a couple of dud PCBs from them before out of all the ones I've ordered. However, when you do get a dud PCB, it's because um, it didn't work out, but they send you the PCB anyway. So if you order 10 and two are dubs uh, or duds, you actually receive uh, 12. So if you have like a difficult uh, circuit to solder up, you can, you know, practice with, uh, you know, bad parts on the bad PCB, or you can use the bad PCBs to shim the good PCBs, and so you can, you know, put solder paste over it. They also do uh, CNC machining, uh, 3D printing, all sorts of cool stuff like that. Check out the link in the description. They've been a fantastic help to the channel and, um, you know, them and the hundreds of people who listen to this podcast at this point are the reason that I um, have not missed a single episode yet. Now back to the conversation. And so in the name of full transparency, uh, right before the ad read, I had to cut out a whole bunch of stuff and I went to bed. Uh, it was getting really late on that recording and it's really late on this recording as well, but I'm going to keep going because um, I'm due to release this episode very shortly. So now it is May 24th at 9.40 p.m. So it's getting late. All right. What's the next topic? Um, 
Well, I have a couple of videos that I have to do. So these are videos that I have uh, committed either to the audience or to sponsors to do. So I have a couple of sponsored videos, which are, uh, well, not really sponsored videos. No money is changing hands, but they did send me some products to look at, which I'm, I'm pretty hyped for. Some of them are really cool. And uh, so, yeah, you're going to be seeing those a little bit sooner. And the other thing is, yeah, those uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries that have been waiting forever. It's just bothering me. I want to build a battery pack so badly. You guys have no idea. And the best thing to, the best place to see that would be on my live streaming channel. I'll probably live stream the video recording for that. I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited for that. Um, but I do want to take this um, opportunity to talk about a positive sponsor experience. Now, YouTube for me has been mostly positive, but there are some big negatives. One of the big negatives I feel is the pressure to create videos. So I like making videos, but I do like making them at my own pace. It's kind of hard to force yourself to be creative, to create something from nothing, uh, you know, sort of with uh, other pressures that are put on you. So this semester at the college has been really hard for me. R really a lot of effort, a lot of brain power is going into it, and there's a whole bunch of things piling up on top of that. And so I was asked to do a sponsored video. Now, not, not a video, I should say, like a sponsored spot inside of a video. It would have been paid, and I sort of under promised so or over promised and under delivered I should say so I told them you know my idea my pitch for the video that was coming up and they said it tied really well into what they wanted the um, the ad read in the video for and they offered you know a sum of money and not insignificant uh, sum of money and I offered them a timeline and they agreed and I got towards the end of the timeline and still I wasn't mentally able to get a, a video produced in that time. Maybe some of you who have been sticking around for a while, there just has not been that many videos recently. And that's because I am brain drained. And so um, the stress that it was causing me not being able to uh, produce the video for um, a sponsor that I felt was quite prestigious um, they were like a, one with a really good reputation, a sponsor that I really didn't want to get on the bad side because I felt like they were a really good match for my channel and my viewers. And so the, the better the match, the better the odds that my viewers, you know, would respond, you know, positively to the ad spots. And so I had to make the impossible decision to email them back and say, look, I'm not able to get this video done. In fact, I haven't done any videos in whatever amount of time. And it just, it seems like it's not going to happen. Uh, it's causing me a lot of stress. I'm feeling really burnt out. I can't do this. And so I said, you know, I'm really sorry for the, you know, wasting your time, but I'm, I can't, I can't make the video. It's, it's just that simple. I can refer you to other creators that are, uh, really good at these kinds of things and you know you can pitch your ideas to them and then they can make your video and you know that's that and so I sent that email and immediately what I felt was like shame uh, I felt like ashamed of myself that I couldn't get it done I felt uh, terrible for having promised something and not delivered on it uh, but it was what it was and I had to do what I had to do for my own mental health, right? It's it's hard sometimes to be creative on command. So I screwed up and I sent that email and that was that. The um, contact over at the uh, sponsorship, which I'll never name, by the way. Uh, I have a whole bunch of sponsors lined up this month and next month. So it's not it's not something that you'll be able to determine who it was and the month after and whatever. Uh, but they emailed me back and they said, oh, let, let's just hop on a call 
you know, for whatever amounts of minutes. So we hopped on a call and the person said, look, what, uh, what do we need to do to make it happen? Make the video happen. What would you need to make the video happen? I said like a whole bunch of weeks. I said like a, a lot of time basically. And they said, okay, that's fine. Take that amount of time and then we'll talk closer to the date. So this, just to show you how, you know, uh, positive that sponsor is to work with. And it was just something I didn't have any experience with. I didn't know they were going to be this positive, but I knew it was a sponsor I didn't want to let down. And when I did let them down, I got a pass. Um, they understood fully the situation and how creators can be. They've worked with creators before, ob quite obviously. And uh, they said, take the time you need. And so, yeah, I have at, at this moment, um, I have not lost that opportunity, which which I do believe it is. It's, it's an opportunity through and through. I mean, there's a dollar figure amount for sure. I mean, the channel it loses money every year. So I'm not I'm not saying that the, you know, that the the dollar amount is is massive, um, but it's I mean, it's good money especially if we're making YouTube videos, which is not uh, physically laborious like most of my day job actually is. Um, but the important part for me was that I keep a good reputation with this sponsor, the specific sponsor, which I was hoping to work with for a long time. And it seems like it it's going to happen. It seems like um, I got off scot-free, so... You know, if that sponsor is listening, which I don't think so, but right, the podcast uh, long form content is not exactly high up on everyone's uh, listening uh, priorities. But uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I really did. I really did need that. And in fact, I'm still struggling to catch up now. You know, on May 24th at the recording of this, I've got a pile of stuff to do. Uh, in fact, my um, my car needs. A timing belt changed, a water pump changed, the um, two camshaft oil seals um, and two O-rings on the heater core uh, all needs to be replaced all at the same time. And I was planning on doing that tomorrow, um, but it seems like I have other work to do, so I won't be able to do that. So just to let you know, like this is um, chaos at the moment which uh, I hope is only for a couple more weeks. So, yeah, I really uh, am in no position to pick up uh, sponsor videos, especially not the ones that require a lot of creativity on my side. Um, so the ones that are coming up very shortly that I have to film at some point, probably on the live stream on a Saturday, is um, the type that where I have a product and I take a look at the product. That, that kind of stuff is actually quite simple for me. Um, a 15-ish minute video of uh, taking a look of a, at a product, depending on what the product is, takes about two hours worth of uh, filming, an hour worth of editing, and um, an hour worth of thumbnail and descriptions and stuff like that. So, you know... I get a product. Usually the product's like only a couple bucks, right? This is kind of what we thrive on in the electronics hobby is uh, cheap electronics from China mostly. And so I get a couple dollars worth of a product, which I have to declare as income. Thanks, uh, CRA. And then um, I spend, I don't remember how many hours, but five hours making a video. To me, that's easy. The one for the sponsor I had to step out of it was going to be like a tutorial type video, which we're talking about 20 to maybe 40 hours worth of work. Uh, only about, you know, four of those is actually filming. And so, yeah, that's why, you know, certain videos are easier to do than others. I guess I can do like, like give you an example. Um, my, if my car needs to do if I need to do brakes on my car I'm actually doing brakes for my neighbor tomorrow because they're going uh, on a long trip um, so so I can't fix my car because I'm you know 
fixing other people's cars. But that's not that's not the you know that's not the crux of it. Um, so, for example, if I need to do brakes on my car, that's like a hour and a half job. So I can knock that out between tasks. Like I can, uh, I can, you know, um, write, you know, write a test for my class, create a test for my class, and then go outside and do those breaks, and then come back in, and then you know, uh, do the powerpoints for the next class. That's something I can sort of fit in. But the the big job on my on my car, the timing belt, that will take me probably about four hours. It might take a little bit more if I run into issues. And so that's not something I can just fit in on a regular day, right? Just any time I want. And I need my car every day these days to go to work since I work um, a lot more days a week. And so that's kind of the example I can give for a YouTube video, which is just kind of like looking at a product. I can knock that out like, you know, between doing my regular tasks. Like I can do, uh, I can do like an hour or two of cleaning the house and then ch- take a look at that video, uh, you know, that product, edit it, set it to export and then go work some more on the house. Um, but the the ones that are like tutorial style, those are long. I've committed to 12 this year. I don't know if I'll be able to release 12 but I will, I will try my darnest, especially with um, the next contract coming up, which should tell, should give me a lot more free time. It's a little bit less brain draining. So hoping that's going to go well. In electronics news, uh, I have ordered some parts to make a pretty simple project. I, um, I think I'm going to um, make a little box in uh, Fusion 360, 3D printable, and I'm going to turn one of those um, uh, buck converters, you know, the DC-DC buck converters, with, um, you know, the little potentiometers that you need to turn with a screwdriver to limit the voltage and the current. Um, I love those little modules, but I want to turn it into something a little bit more user-friendly. I'd like it to be a device that a you know a regular person can use uh, without the use of tools. Those modules are phenomenal. I really do like them, but the fact that you need a little screwdriver to turn the potentiometer is not great. So what I have done is I have ordered uh, ten turn potentiometers. I think they were ten k. They might have been a fifty k ohm potentiometers. Um, I ordered a ton of them. I ordered some little uh, panel current and voltmeters. And I'm going to probably design... um, Actually, I don't even think I need a PCB for this one. Uh, So I may not design a PCB, but we'll see. Uh, And I think I have these tiny little fans, you know, that you could use for a 3D printer. And I'm going to design these little boxes that you can just put a voltage in and uh, twiddle the pot around to limit the current out. I think the idea behind this is going to be that you're going to put your voltage in, you're going to set the voltage out uh, with the screwdriver, and then close the little box, and then uh, then whenever you want to make adjustments, you can just, you know, turn the pot to adjust the current, so you can current limit. And what that does is when you use uh, when you have a current limit is that um, it'll adjust the voltage up to the maximum when you you know allow current to flow. Uh, so yeah, you turn the pot you know uh, clockwise and you get more current. You turn it counterclockwise, you get less current and it'll you know limit the voltage to in order to limit the current. So that'll make these things like uh, fantastic little LED drivers, for example. You can add output capacitance as well to smooth the uh, waveforms. Um, you can also you'll be able to use them to slow down motors uh, and pumps and stuff like that. So let's say you have a little uh, desktop fan, you know, a little DC fan. Well, you'll easily be able to plug this in line with that fan, and then you can control the speed and therefore the noise it makes. Same thing with um, people that have like, um, you know, like fountains and stuff like that. 
you'll be able to slow it down. And I think making a product that one of you electronics enthusiasts can take on, you know, ma making a, a project that you guys can take on, build, and then, you know, give this device to like your parents, to your kids, to your significant others, to, you know, other family members, to friends, coworkers, whatever, to control the, you know, current of stuff without them having to break out a little screwdriver or having to, you know, when, when it's been a while since you've touched the module, go to the module and, um, you know, and then twiddle the, uh, the pot or figure out which pot does which because there's three potentiometers on those things. And I think the other nice part is that I believe there are a couple of different sizes of DC-DC converters um, that I can use in order to make a couple different wattage ratings, right? So if you got just something small like a 5-volt uh, desk fan that plugs into a USB port, you don't need, you know, a 300-watt DC-DC converter. You can use the really cheap, you know, modules with the surface mount little, you know, 90-degree pot and turn it into something that's a lot, a little bit more useful. Then there's the slightly bigger units, um, and then there's the big, like 300 watt units. So you'd be able to to work with all of those units. You know, I'll make it maybe a small, medium, large. It'll take a little bit of time in in CAD, and a little bit of 3D printing. But that is something you know I can I can work on during my leisure time. Like I can throw on a podcast and do some work in Fusion 360. So that kind of stuff doesn't bother me, um, you know, because I can't be just doing, you know, work work all the time. In other news, this would not be an episode of the Simple Electronics Podcast if we didn't talk about the crazy weather. And there's always crazy weather here in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, and these days has not been any different. And so um, I don't have the live conversions for you guys. Ah, I might as well. I'll, I'll take a look. Uh, here we go. Oh. Uh, all right. So recently it's been um, very warm. So somewhere around uh, 30 degrees Celsius, uh, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, somewhere around there. Maybe uh, 20 degrees Celsius, you know, 72 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. Um, but the last couple of days, it's been dropping near freezing. So um, around zero Celsius and uh, 32 Fahrenheit. And so it's been a little nuts to have that uh, dichotomy of like the days being in the, you know, 30s or 80s or let, let's say you know, high 20s, uh, you know, 80s during the day, and then at night, like literally dropping down to freezing. So that's, uh, that, that's quite interesting. And uh, tomorrow, it's supposed to be, you know, today was actually a nice day, it was like 12 C, you know, somewhere around, uh, you know, 50 something Fahrenheit. Um, but tomorrow, it'll be nearly, uh, you know, 30 or 86 ish and it'll be like that for an entire week and so it just feels like being a Canadian this time of year is like being on a weather roller coaster right where some days I feel like everything is great and you know sometimes it's great during the day and bad at night and sometimes it's just overall bad like it's really hard you know there there's it's crazy because we had days you know, that were like incredibly hot. And then at night, it got so cold, we had to turn the heating on. It, I think it's so weird. I think the, the, the I think this is an effect of, you know, global climate change being that, um, you know, the extremes get more extreme so that we have like ridiculous oscillating weather up and down. And so yeah, tomorrow morning, I was supposed to go fix the, the car in the driveway. But uh, yeah, that's not happening. And I'm sort of happy about that because, yeah, tomorrow is supposed to be extremely hot, extremely sunny. And, uh, yeah, which means also I need to work on the, you know, solar energy project. So I need to run wires all the way to the backyard and um, put the solar panels up 
Oh, I should probably do that rock solar video as well for the um, the solar power bank um, or the so solar power station. I got that late in the year last year, too late to catch the sun, but now it's uh, it's starting to get up there. It's starting to get kind of like the ideal weather to do some uh, solar projects. So that should be pretty nice. I do need to go to uh, Home Depot and get some lumber. It's been like a rough road for lumber as well. Up here in Canada, um, two by fours have hit like $6 uh, quite a few times. I, I don't know if it's... Uh, down now let's see oh two by fours are four dollars yeah that's a that's a deal i'm gonna have to go buy some for sure and set up a little um a, a little lean to with some solar panels get a little bit of the julian islet vibes and then eventually when my batteries come in i'll be able to hook those things up and uh charge them for free and hopefully if everything goes to plan I will um, basically have, um, I'll, I'll collect the energy during the week, use it to power the lights inside the shop here or in my workspace here, and then uh, still have some charge left over to bring with me fishing. So put my little boat in with the electric motor and, uh, and go fishing. So that should be quite a bit of fun. I don't know if you guys are interested in those kinds of videos at all, but let me know in the description below or in the comment section below and then I'll know if I should bother putting up those kinds of videos on the second channel or you know not even worrying about it so yeah it should be pretty interesting it's a little weird here in uh, in Ottawa I do need to find some better uh, sort of fishing spots that I can launch the boat for free since we're in a city um, there is a few places to launch the boat but it costs money because, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it, there's quite a bit of people. There is one park that I know it's free, but it's on a different uh, waterway than what I was hoping for. So, yeah, you know, I'll figure it out. Don't worry about that. So, yeah, I need to stop rambling and head to bed because it is now 10.50, so it just tells you how long it takes me to record these solo episodes. So it's 10.50 p.m. and I still need to uh, edit this, uh, put the background in, do my animations on the uh, logo. Um, but if it wasn't for, you know, the hundreds of you who are listening every week, um, it, it just it wouldn't be worth it. So thank you guys so much for listening, whether or not you watch the videos. Uh, actually, I'd be kind of interested to know. If uh, some of you are just podcast listeners, you don't watch any videos at all on my channel, because that would be uh, that'd be pretty cool to know. Because I I don't actually think I know a lot about my audio viewers, because a lot of the platforms like Spotify and um, iTunes and stuff they don't really they don't have like a comment section, so I only get to read the comments on YouTube, which are quite sparse. I think most of my um, viewership on the podcast is on the audio only platforms. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. And uh, thank you again for tuning in. Sorry, the episode's a bit short, but I need to edit it and go to bed so I can start my busy day again tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Catch you on the next one.